everyone. We are here with Mark and Sharna from the show Inmate to Roommate. If you guys haven't seen it, I really suggest you guys check it out. It documents inmates who meet people while they're in prison, pen pals, and then they move in with them. And it's on A&E. They just finished the first season. And we have Mark and Sharna here with us. How are you guys doing? Good. So how did you guys originally get on the show? I, I think that um, originally I saw a casting call on Facebook and um, and within a matter of uh, a couple of days we had started an interview process, recommendations, and eventually, um, you know, we, we agreed to be on the show with the contract. Okay. Um, so how many inmates have you wrote before, Sharna? And were you... Did you begin writing Bill or any inmates for romantic reasons, or what was your reasoning behind it? I actually started writing Ten Friends in 2008, so it's been about 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, there was an ad in a church, um, like a church magazine, um, mm -hmm. that there was a need for people to write to prisoners, and so I responded to it. And uh, initially I started with three, and then as needs were, they would ask for me to take on more. And at one point I had up to 13 by the time that I met Mark. Oh, wow. So what, when, when you first started talking to Bill, what was like your first impressions of Bill? And like, what were your guys' conversations like? Well, the first um, at least three years, maybe four, was all by letter, and then um, phone was available. So then, you know, it would be letters and phone calls, and it was all about everyday stuff. You know, just, um, you know, he would tell me about his life, and I would share things, you know, from my life at that time. Um, Mark and I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, at that time, Mark and I had just gotten married, Um and so, you know, he's been pretty much in the pen friend with me since then, since we got married. And so regularly, you know, he would send messages to or say hi to him on the phone if we were in a phone conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, it was all just very platonic, very just friendly. There was never any romantic talk other mm -hmm. than, you know, the one comment that I did mention on the show that he had written saying, you know, you're so nice. I hope someday when I get out, I can find a girl as nice as you. But, you know, that's just a general comment. Yeah. And I just take it as romantic that of an interest in me because I was already married. Mm -hmm. And um, and that, you know, that was brought up and because it was just a general statement. Mm -hmm. So how many, is this your guys' first time, like, hosting an inmate in your guys' house? Or how many times have you guys done something like this before? This is the first time ever hosting an inmate. I mean, that was never ever in our thoughts or our plans. We, you know, we've been involved in prison ministry as far as letters and mm -hmm. uh, sending, you know, Bibles to people in prison and things like that. But, um, you know, before um, Bill was released, I think about eight months before he was released, he had to turn in a parole plan like the year before. Mm -hmm. And um, he just out of the blue asked us, would we consider letting him come and pull here in Indiana? He did not want to go back to Florida. And mm -hmm. so we told him that we would pray about it, talk about it, and we would get back to him. So mm -hmm. we agreed to do that and give him a chance. Um, you know, he was always friendly, um, bubbly personality. You know, um, you know, there was no nothing that we were concerned about as far as him coming to um, pro here. So yeah. we said yes, and so the plans were in, and of course they had to be approved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we previously had taken a woman who was basically homeless, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she lived with us for several years. Um, mm -hmm. She got a job within a number of months, and you know, after about four months, she started paying rent, and um, you know, until she could move in with um, with a, a friend later, probably several years later, and. Um, and uh, to this day, she seems like she's, uh, you know, really made, made advances, um, continued to grow. She's now a, been a teacher for years. And um, so we kind of were hoping that it'd be a similar experience with Bill. Yeah, that's unfortunate. 
So and how soon before Bill got out of prison did you guys decide that he was going to move in with you guys? It was it, it was more than six months. Oh, okay. It was the year before that we had to tell him that he could parole here because he had to turn in that parole plan. Mm -hmm. like eight, I think around eight months ahead. What did Bill tell you guys his plans were when he was going to move in with you guys? Like, was it meant to be a long-term situation or just like a way for him to get it on his feet? What was the whole plan with all that? It, it was meant to be short-term. You know, we were going to help him, um, you know, him get a job. And as soon as he had enough money that he would be able to get his own place. And, yeah. um, you know, when he arrived here, the parole officer that was here at the time he came, the first visit, um, you know, reinforced as soon as he had the money, you know, and found a place that she had to go look at it and approve it. So, mm -hmm. you know, we just, you know, it was meant to be short term, like maybe three to six months. We didn't really have a definite time, but it was till he got a job and got money coming in to support himself. Different. Um different things we heard at, at one point, the main emphasis was, I have two jobs right out of prison and I'm going to be writing books at the same time. So that was like, well, we'll all be in the same boat, you know, tight out of the work. And it yeah. was a little different when we started hearing that he's, you know, pretty much got a hustler and dreamer attitude and he's really waiting on movie deals and lucrative book, book deals. So. Things were all over the place first, planes. Yeah. Did you guys have like an agreement that he was going to pay so much in rent, like a specific amount that he needed to pay by a certain timeline? Well, um, the plan was is that, you know, he would he would be here. You know, we were going to give him a few weeks, like six weeks um, free, you know, because we knew he wouldn't have income coming in. And, you know, so there, it was a freebie for the first um, six to eight weeks. And then after that, we told him there was a set amount, which would include everything, and he was agreeable to it. And so, you know, when that six weeks, I think the six weeks was, were up, then I started keeping a, 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 a tab in a notebook. Yeah. And then he told me, you know, even before he was released, I was buying his clothes for him to, to leave out of prison with. Mm -hmm. and, and, and winter jackets and things like that, because it was um, in, the, in the winter time when he was released. And he told me, um, just keep a tab, keep track of it. I'll pay you back everything that you buy from me. And, you know, and he had repeated that, you know, after he was out. So I was keeping a tab on it. Did he ever pay you guys back for that stuff? He did not. He has not paid us anything. Oh, man. <laughs> did, did, what were your first thoughts, Mark, when you found out that Bill was going to move in with you guys? And did you talk, and you said that, like, you talked to Bill before he moved in, or was your guys' first conversation when he moved in? Yeah, he was very friendly, and uh, and Sharna um, mentioned that he had a really good, um, she had, she was very confident in his abilities, his, um, his future, and mm -hmm. uh, she considered him very trustworthy. So yeah. I was um, fine with him um, staying in her spare bedroom. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, there was there was never any red flags when we were you know within even within the first week there there was just a little bit of growing pains but really um, really I was fine with it. Yeah. Did, uh, so whose idea was it for the whole girly decor you guys had in Bill's bedroom, <laughs> like the rainbows and the unicorn? That wasn't our idea. That was not. Um, that was something that was uh, uh, added to the, you know, to the to the film. It was um, something that has thrown a lot of people off, mm -hmm. and it cuts off. Why would you um, have a man come into a bedroom like that? But it was, you know, that was just uh, a production. Mm -hmm. uh, Who made it? What'd you say, Sharna? We had actually repainted that room and gotten it really nice for him, and we had it in a Florida um, theme decor. <laughs> it had to get changed to the unicorns and all that. <laughs> who um, who made the li r list of roles? Was that your guys' idea? Um, half of them were not our idea. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of when when you don't really know somebody. You kind of are stuck somewhere between 
um, hey, Bill, do you, you do you, or, you know, or 50 rules. And we kind of settled on, you know, about 10 or 12 things. And then some things were um, maybe added for interest. But, yeah. um, but that has also been another thing where people immediately were lost. Like, why would you have that many rules and the sticky notes for more rules? And, and really, that wasn't the case. Um, as it was, there were some rules that were definitely not followed on a daily basis, and there were no penalties, as the penalty category says at the bottom. Yeah. So what were the main rules on the list that you guys were worried about that you just wanted to make sure he followed? Well, I think um, I think uh, being quiet when <laughs> uh, people kind of sleep, and that's a tough one because if I'm working night shifts, um, you know, he, he needs to talk through the day and Sharna goes to bed at a certain time. And so with, with Bill and his, um, you know, personality, um, his voice, uh, it's just kind of one of those old houses that echoes and, um, yeah. he would be talking from, you know, 6.30 a.m. to 11, 11.30 often. Oh my goodness, he's talking on the phone like a teenager. <laughs> yeah, he, he tried to, you know, to be quiet, but he also, if you heard me upstairs going to the bathroom, uh, walk into the bathroom, he would, you know, see if I was awake yet. And so it, it was definitely um, something that I hadn't anticipated, um, my privacy and, um, you know, somebody that would know my schedule. Yeah. So did Bill use an excessive amount of toilet paper? Um, during the time of filming, COVID was really heavy here and mm. it was hard to find toilet paper in the stores. Yeah. And he was using like a quadruple size roll uh, more than one a day. Oh, wow. Was, to me, it was excessive for a man. I got him clean access because he said his nose runs a lot, you know. And mm -hmm. so I got a Kleenex too because I could get those easier than I could toilet paper. So yeah. definitely, you know, I talked to him about it. He said, you've got to slow down on it. And, um, you know, you're using an excessive amount to give you a 12 pack every week or eight or nine days was just too much. Yeah. And he never tried to like slow down when you guys asked him to. No. <laughs> so like, then, um, like, like you said, in the one scene, he, in prison, they use toilet paper for everything. So, um, so that was just the way it was. His habit of using toilet paper, and there's a lot of things that we didn't expect a person would understand when they come out, where you have to pay for everything, and um, you have to you have to try to go shopping trips now with a third person in the you know in the household. Yeah. Um, and so, and he also complained a lot about how he wasn't allowed to eat meat in your guys' home. Was he allowed to eat meat in your guys' home? Yeah, he, um, he ate meat um, usually in his room uh, or bathroom. <laughs> um, <laughs> on, on his bed, um, you, you could tell he was, uh, the funny thing is you could tell he was uh, pulling that out of, out of, out of thin air with um, having to hide the sandwich because all he had to do was close his door. He, he ate all the all the time whenever he wanted with, behind closed doors, <laughs> and to say that he was afraid he'd be punished, you know, was just yeah, yeah. And, and so he didn't have to use the vents to cool his sandwich up. <laughs> was that with the time and the heat coming out the vents, so that didn't even make sense. Yeah. I mean, they showed the snow on the ground outside, you know, um, during part of the filming, and, and it, was, it was actually snow snow months and, and heat was on. Yeah. All except all except for towards the end, yeah, towards where, the end. It, where it got hot, you know, when he left. But most of the time, it was just um, actually just heat out of the vent, so. And I saw in an interview that Bill was trying to say that you used to eat Mark with him, or meet with him all the time, Mark. <laughs> What is your response? Well, some, sometimes I'd probably eat uh, chicken wings or something if he had extra. Mm -hmm. I, I, I never said I don't eat meat. Um, I just don't eat it very often. Yeah. All right. And what, the whole ice mis machine situation, what was up with that? Was he allowed to use the ice machine? 
Well, Bill didn't need to use the ice machine because I made the ice and I made sure that the bin was full and he had all the ice that he needed. So how soon in the living situation did you guys start to realize that this probably wasn't going to work out? Was there something specific that he did? Well, after the first week or so, um, we definitely saw some um, tough times in communication and um, saw that we were all maybe a little stubborn. Um, mm -hmm. but, but we started to then, I, I'm guessing in the second week, Maybe he would, he was, you know, taking me aside after Sharna would, you know, have enough of him, you know, um, complaining to her. He would take me aside and say, uh, you know, I don't know how you do it. I don't know why you're still married to this gal. Um, you can do better. I mean, it was, um, it was really one of those things where I ended up being kind of trying to be a peacemaker knowing that he might have a lot of steam to blow off. And, um, you know, I would listen to what he said, but it definitely quickly got to be um, kind of hostile where he had certain demands and needs that frequently he would, you know, come to us with. So he was trying to turn you guys against each other. Was he ever coming into you, Sharna, and being like, oh, saying the same stuff that he was telling Mark, like, oh, you guys don't need to be together? Or um, not, not necessarily that. It was just pretty much the minute I walked in the door a lot of days, um, he was wanting something or complaining about something and, um, it, it was, it was ongoing. It was just complaints and unhappiness and, um, you know, he, when, when he got out, he said, you know, the rules are, he's from New York and so rules are negotiable. And yeah. so, like, uh, you know, whatever was on that rule list, I mean, he, he didn't follow any of it. It didn't matter. He, he wasn't quiet when I needed to sleep. Mm -hmm. I, would, um, I would try to yell down the landing, you know, from upstairs, can you please turn your, you know, I'd holler his name and he wouldn't hear me. So I would have to go downstairs and knock on his door and it was always shut and locked. And I would say, mm -hmm. can you please be quiet because it's 1130 at night and I had to get up at 330 in the morning to go to work. And yeah. that was Many times I had to do that, and he just wasn't respectful. He was loud, um, you know. So, I, you know, I would try to enforce some rules that were logical, you know, yeah. and, and clean up after yourself. And and um, I know he has claimed on interviews recently that he was always offering to help us. He didn't sweep a floor or wash dishes. Nothing. He, he, I never saw him cleaning. Well, the thing is, he usually had um, the television going with the movie on top of being on the phone. So it was um, quite a loud thing. And I think that part of the problem, part of the accusations that later came out were just his anger that she would ask him to be quiet. I mean, you, you know, um, it, was, it was really loud. Um, I don't know if he realized it or could help it even, because um, his voice is loud, but... Um, but my, I know my wife would never come downstairs in something skimpy. She always has, you know, pajamas that zip up to her neck. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't know where that came from, but we can, I guess you can ask about that later. I already yeah. on the show, it's false accusations and it's absolutely false. I, I would never do that. My kids will, uh, you know, they will agree to that too. I just, I don't wear stuff like that. Yeah, and every I've seen him on social media, and every time he says it, what you're wearing, he says it's something different. Like in one case, he was saying you're wearing a teddy and stockings, then he said you're wearing leggings, and then in another thing on Reddit, I can't remember what he said, but it was something crazy. I was like, okay, Sharna's not wearing that. That's where he lost me when he started doing making those accusations. I'm like, okay, you lost me with that one. <laughs> I don't even own things like that. I, I'm a very conservative. Um, I, I grew up a farm girl, and I just I, that's not me at all. That, that's yeah. all all the accusations. Mm -hmm. So, how was he like when the cameras weren't around? <laughs> um, well, I'd, I'd like to say there were a lot of good times where we would um, go for rides and, uh, you know, we'd go out uh, different places around town and it's just nice to see someone that hasn't seen, um, you know, certain restaurants in 18 years or 20 years and, yeah. and to see a person say, you know, this is new, that's new, um, the world has changed so much. It was, 
definitely good experience to hang out with him at times. Um, he was, you know, he was always a very talkative person, often very active, wanting to just, you know, go, go here, go there. It was, it was nice, but then when he had a demand, um, it was overwhelming. Like following around my wife with a phone, you need to talk to my girlfriend. She's right here. Talk to her. You know, he would hear no and say it better be a yes. And, um, that was disturbing. How were you guys' conversations like when he did move in with you guys? Um, it was, uh, you know, it was, it, I'd say overall it was um, quickly, quickly turned more and more negative. Um, yeah. Just so we, the, how could we call ourselves Christian? You know, these sorts of things you can't have a good response to. I mean, if someone judges you as not being Christian, then that's your opinion. But you cannot defend yourself if you haven't met their expectations of what they believe you should do for them. So, um, so most of the conversations were quickly um, negative, and he, within the first couple weeks between us, um, he would trash our marriage, say, I don't give you guys more than six months. Um, you don't get along with, with each other. You, you certainly yeah. are the word, you know, really, really bad roommates, I guess. Did he ever try to get a job while he was living with you guys? Um, you know, those those conversations went mostly like, um, uh, hey, Bill, um, you said you're going to go today to get a job and, uh, you know, apply for jobs. And there's plenty of jobs for felons, but he'd say, uh, you know, let's, instead of 10, let's make it noon. And then at about two o'clock, he would be ready. We'd go out and he would try to sell his book at, um, whatever, whatever offices we walked into. And he'd never take applications. He would just um, he just talk talk to them, and uh, and I know he was offered at least one job that he uh, quickly turned down because he said he didn't, didn't make enough money. So what was he doing all day if he wasn't working? I he had the door closed. He was watching movies um, and on talking the phone. talking on the phone. <laughs> oh, wow. So when. How far into living with you guys did he try to start getting married to move in with him? Or, well, I guess move in with you guys. Well, actually, um, um, even before he got out of prison, um, I, they were wanting to move, um, the girlfriend and her mom, I guess they were wanting to move here because he was coming here and um, asked about, come, um, I'm sorry, they asked about through him about um like moving in here they had a dog i said no we have our own pet and um you know we just we um i gave information to the girlfriend of rental places around here for them to find their own place yeah. too much for us and he wasn't paying any rent um but you know, and I was glad then that we had not agreed for them to come here because, you know, we're not going to let a whole family of people live here. Yeah. So, yeah, it was up to her to find a place, and I guess they finally did because it was her. Did Bill, did he end up getting married when he went to California? We don't know. Yeah, I I'm so sure. <laughs> He says so many things, and, and so much of it is not true. We find out it's not true. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's what I'm starting to learn, too. That's my opinion, you know, from yeah. all that knows, that it's not true. Um, did you guys sleep in separate rooms, and were you guys having issues in your marriage, like Bill was trying to reference? Um, well, at the beginning of COVID, um, I both between her job and my job, we had COVID that came and went, and so it was better for us when we were sleeping rather than me with my uh, acid reflux, um, you know, coughing at, at, at times throughout the night. The cough on her possibly spread uh, COVID. It's just better for us to have minimal contact while we were sleeping if we were, you know, if I was home at night with her. Um, that doesn't mean we didn't get quality time. We uh, really yeah. focused on uh, being together. Um, uh, you know, for 
spending time in the evening together. Um, however, during sleep time, we still prefer, even though there's minimal risk now, to sleep in separate bedrooms. Yeah, and you guys are in healthcare. Yeah, both of us yeah. in healthcare, and I work with medically fragile people, and he works in a nursing home with elderly. And, you know, yeah, you know if if you know, one of us got contaminated, it's just better that we have our main stuff separated. Yeah, I understand that. So what, how did you guys originally meet? And how long ago did you guys get married? We met in 2014 through a, um, a Christian dating site. Mm -hmm. and, um, it, it was an answer to prayer because I had quit looking for somebody after I had divorced. And mm -hmm. um, so it's a miracle how we met. That's a story for another time. But um, we, um, our first date was he invited me to come over and work the, the um, church booth at the town fair here. Mm -hmm. And that was in 2014 in July. Mm -hmm. And it was about three weeks, four weeks after we actually had met. And so that was our first date. And it's just been very positive. Um, we got married 10 months later. Mm -hmm. And I've been over here in Indiana ever since, and um, we're very happily married. Oh, you didn't live in Indiana before this? I lived in Ohio at the time. Oh, that's interesting. I moved here to be with him. Oh, okay. So you had no romantic interest in Bill at all? I never had any romantic interest in Bill, not from the beginning of Ken's friend until now. <laughs> Why do you... Why do you think he kept trying to suggest that you did? I do not know. I have no idea how Bill thinks or why he would say that. Were there let, any? Let me just let me just mention that um, that the uh, the posts that that I often see in the interviews that he gives answers. Um, he promises, um, you know, promises letters, video recordings, audio recordings, and. You know, he said, he, you know, he said, stay tuned. And unfortunately, many people believe him because he says the lawyers won't let me release this and that. He, he always talked like that. And in, in my opinion, there is absolutely nothing, um, no evidence whatsoever. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's a shame that someone, you know, might tell, tell something that's dishonest. And then, in my opinion, and then just, um, you know, decide to run with it and try to get people's interest based on knowing Sharma. You know. So how long did he live with you guys in total? He lived with us about three months. And have you guys heard from Bill or Mary since he's moved out? We pretty much agreed to not communicate anymore um, just to keep uh, healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping as you saw me in tears that time and space would um, make things better. But um, unfortunately, the, with the accusations that continue, um, you know, out there in, in his interviews and his uh, postings, that it's just not, it's just not a healthy thing to try to restore any friendship or communication. Yeah. Have, uh, what was going through your mind when Bill was leaving, Mark? When Bill was what? When Bill was leaving and you got your outside. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, when he was leaving, um, it was not knowing if he would end up homeless, falling through the cracks. Um, but also the weight of the world seemed to be lifting off my shoulders. Seeing yeah. it because because um, we had had so much stress in our home for months. And um, it just wasn't a good living situation. And it was, uh, and it, despite the... My worries, I knew it was so much better for us that he was going. And did Bill have a car the whole time he was living with you guys? Most of the time. There was a friend of ours gave him a car. Oh, that's um, nice. Within a few weeks after he was released. Uh, why, did, why was he still making like Mark and you drive him around after he had the car? Um, he said that it was um, not safe to drive, so... I don't know. I didn't mess with it much. I just know that he he wanted um, often wanted uh, rides here and there. What was the biggest lesson you guys learned from this whole experience? For me, um, probably the biggest lesson is that um, 
someone on paper or on a phone, you do not know them until you live with them. Yeah, a lot of people need to hear that because so many people fall in love with the whole prison talk or not even just relationships too, but just people trying to make friendships. You really have no idea until you see that person, see them get mad, get upset, you know, see them show all their true colors. I know on the filming I had um, made a comment when he was talking about his girlfriend. I said he needed to kind of slow down because he was talking about, you know, like he got engaged so fast and you know, like weeks after he met her and, and he hadn't even met her yet from when he found her, you know, they, it was all phone conversations, but he hadn't physically met her and it was already talking marriage. And I said, you need to wait, you need to meet her, you need to spend time with her. Having been married and, and divorced, you know, I was get, trying to give him advice about it and he was taking that as a negative because he was just rushing it. And I, to me, that's a big um, red flag. Yeah. What was the biggest lesson you learned from this whole experience, Mark? Well, that that together we got through the toughest time in our marriage by far. Um, made us grateful for what we for the peaceful times that we had before. And yeah. like we said, I like you said, I've told you a thousand times to check your woman, and that was often the conversation where he um, where she would be belittled, and you know. Tough times um, brought, basically brought us closer together. So, yeah. um, so the only way that we really were able to figure out how to better communicate was by reading some marriage books and figuring out how better um, we could uh, resolve the situation. Um, and we've continued that through today. Um, you know, a lot of guys would say, "Well, we're only going to read a marriage book if you're um, threatening to leave for the weekend." You know, whereas we found mm -hmm. it to be a strength, you know. We're we're definitely stronger when we spend more time together and um, learn more about each other. You just have to be careful, really careful about your instincts because someone could just be a, a whole different person. Would you guys consider taking in another inmate? I think right now, um, you know, we're still kind of dealing with the aftermath of the, mm -hmm. the roommate that we did have. And um, we've really increased our prison ministry. We're up to 100, over 130 pen friends um, through the um, through the ministry that we've been helping. Mm. And so we're busy with that. And I think we're just at, at this time. I want my home to be safe when my children and grandchildren come. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's there would be trepidations about coming. So I think that um, for this time. Uh, not at this time that we're not interested in that again. Yeah, just keep it at pen pals. <laughs> Sorry, Buzz. Where, do you guys feel like you're portrayed on the show accurately? Definitely not. And, and you know, with the filming was stressful for me. And then, you know, you know, from pretty much the beginning, there was problems. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that you know when I saw myself the first the first show um I just look so I look stressed um I'm not smiling I'm usually just very happy that, that Bill was here was not happy months for me they got to the point where I just dreaded coming home every day mm -hmm. yeah I think that um unfortunately it didn't show some of the things that they had filmed that showed within a week or so uh definite problems so it kind of could have come down for some people to a he said, she said. Um, and really, there were ongoing issues with us all getting along um, all throughout the uh, throughout the film, throughout the film and stuff. How do you guys feel now that the season's over with? Relief. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, relief, um, you know, the, a lot of the, you know, reviews and stuff, is, um, it, it's been based on a lot of misunderstandings because of, you know, um, you know, alleged false accusations against mm -hmm. me and um, things. So I, I, for me, it's a relief and I just want life to go back to my normal life that it was before Bill. Yeah, yeah. they'll get there eventually and everybody will start moving on. I hope they do a season two. That's what I want to see or do like a reunion show. Is there anything else you guys want to clear up or let people know? 
I, I don't. I, I think you've kind of addressed some of the issues that um, people have been have been contacting us about regularly, randomly, driving by, yelling, screaming. Um, you know, and, and it's just a lot of misunderstandings. I think. Um, so I so I appreciate um, I appreciate the thoughts uh, and the opportunity to, to chat with you. Yeah, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You guys want people to follow you guys on social media? You guys want to shout out your social media? I, our um, our website for our ministry, mm -hmm. and which includes the reasoning behind writing to to prisoners, is um, Empowered Ten Ministry, mm -hmm. and that's on um, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and other places. So that's Empowered, E M Powered. Okay, Empowered Pen Ministry, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll find it and I'll link it underneath here after that, or after I'm done. Well, thank you guys so much for chatting with me today. I appreciate you guys being open and telling your guys is true. All mm -hmm. right. Well, if you, you, unless you guys have anything else to say, I'll let you guys go ahead and get off here. I appreciate it. You guys have a good day. All right. All right. Bye. -bye. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank you.